Blessings. I'm gospel recording artist appointed. Please stay tuned for Let's Talk to the Lord Gospel Radio Talk Show, created and hosted by Apostle John E. Ross. Trying to do what's right, but it does. Christ Jesus. 
I am your gospel radio apostle, Apostle John E. Ross, creator and host of this podcast, lead apostle and founder of the Omega International Prophetic Ministries, and thank you for tuning in for season five of the Let's Talk to the Lord gospel radio talk show. And Kingdom, our guest for this episode of Let's Talk to the Lord is the award-winning songwriter and gospel recording artist, Calvin Bridges. Brother Calvin, welcome to Let's Talk to the Lord. Thank you, Brother John. God bless you, and hello to all of your listeners. Amen, amen. It is indeed a honor to have one of the generals in gospel music as a guest on our podcast. So before we begin our interview, please share with us your history of songs written, recordings, and the artists you have recorded with over the years. Oh, my God, John, let me see. Um, My history. My history goes back to Chicago. I'm from Chicago, Illinois, which is gospel music mecca. Yes. I was blessed as a youngster to attend service with my sister at Mount Sinai Baptist Church on the west side, who was the pianist at that church, uh, the Reverend James Cleveland. He was a reverend at that time, but he was this James Cleveland from Chicago, and uh, he was the pianist there. And then my mother was a member of Pilgrim Baptist Church, and mm-hmm. I used to go to communion with her where – Professor Thomas Dorsey was the minister of music. So my roots are deep into the gospel music tradition. And I I say it's a setup because, of course, I didn't know that this would be my life's work and my life's mission at that time. Uh, I have worked with the great Dr. Albertina Walker, uh, writing for her, I Can Go to God in Prayer, uh, Grammy-nominated Spread the Word, which we performed at the Grammy Awards, of the 26th Annual Grammy Awards. Uh, yes. I've been blessed to work with Patti LaBelle uh, on the Coming Home to Gospel special, TV special. I've worked with the uh, Pop Staples and the Gospel at Colonus. And uh, I even had an opportunity to share the stage with Stevie Wonder at uh, one of Chicago's festivals. And uh, I, I posted this on my social media. But, man, it was a great, great experience for me when he called me up to the stage and uh, as we began to sing, he put the mic in my hand and whispered in my ear, he says, you can do what you want. And then uh, he was singing what well, we were singing. I can't get no satisfaction. And uh, I started singing. When he told me that, I started singing, Jesus, give satisfaction. And, man, it was a capacity crowd. It was out in Grant Park in Chicago, yeah. 10,000 people, man. They started screaming and I just lost it. I went into a euphorian trance, <laughs> a utopian trance, and yeah. man, it was a, an amazing experience. So God has blessed me. Then on the Europe side, I've worked with the great Oslo Gospel Choir and done many festivals and things over there and many recordings of uh, a lot of choirs from different countries. So God has just blessed me richly in my faith walk and in my musical career journey, and I'm so grateful. I'll stop now. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Good. And please share with us your story of repentance when you began your relationship with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Well, praise the Lord, brother. I have to say, God found me before I found him. Yes. You know, John, I grew up on the west side of Chicago in a third floor tenement, which we would just really call the slums. And uh, one day, I, was, I remember being very young. And I looked out of the window and I saw birds on the power lines. And then I saw a roach crawl by the windowsill. And I said to myself, I'm different from that bird and I'm different from this roach. And that was an awakening, an awareness to me that I was uh, different. Okay, so my mother always sent me to church. I was baptized after hearing the gospel preached uh, from Bishop Charles Poole and Mother Maddie B. Poole at the Bethlehem Healing Temple in Chicago's West Side. So I was baptized there. My aunt told me at the age of seven. So, uh, and then she told me I would get the chairs and the boxes and set up and say I was going to be a preacher. I don't really have a memory of some of those things, but uh, 
I'm just grateful for my mother and for my aunt. And then uh, I think my first conscious repentance yeah. and salvation experience was at a Billy Graham crusade at McCormick okay. Place. Amen. And I walked up to give my life and my heart to the Lord after hearing Billy Graham preach the gospel. It was among thousands. But, man, let me tell you something. I repent and I'm saved every day of my life. <laughs> yeah. Praise God. <laughs> You know, the word of God says that when we sin, not if we sin, but when yeah. we sin, if we confess that sin, he is faithful and just to forgive us yeah. and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So my walk has been a walk of faith, even when I wasn't doing right when I, you know, because I started my career in the secular world uh, right out of high school. I joined a couple of bands, and then I got hooked up with the uh, uh, R&B artist named Jerry Butler. I don't know if you know that name at all, uh, here out of Chicago. He was the first lead singer of The Impressions, which later on Curtis Mayfield became a part of. But long story short, yes. I started in his uh, organist, and then from there I went to be his musical director. And then from there I met a couple of other people, and I went in 1972, my first trip to Europe. Uh, and uh, that was an amazing experience. So, man, I mean, I could go on and on and on and talk about a whole lot of stuff. I don't know how much time we have, and I don't want to give too much time to any certain particular topic, but uh, it's been a very, very rich blessing for me, and, and God has just graced me and favored me to uh, go many places and do many things. Amen. Kingdom, the topic for this interview that the Lord has laid upon Brother Calvin's heart is word and prayer are life's sustainability. And yeah. Brother Calvin, this topic is power from the spirit and in truth. The word of God is what, let's talk to the Lord, is founded upon. John 1 and 1, which declares, in the beginning before all time was the word, meaning Christ, and the word was with God, and the word was God himself. And when we study the word, live by the word, apply the word in our daily lives, we find that that word is our life, bread, bread. Yeah blood and our blueprint for life. The word can be all of this and more because the origin of God's word is God. It's mm -hmm. God that is that divine power, authority, and the mm -hmm. anointing that comes with the word. And when we have repented and began relationship with God through Jesus Christ, who knew no sin and literally became the living, breathing word in this earth realm, we qualify ourselves to speak that word and see that word began to bear fruit in our lives. And when we continually go to the Word and obey God's Word and receive instructions from the Word, we talk to the Lord, the foundation of this podcast. So, Brother Calvin, how did you make this discovery about God's Word and its sustainability for yourself? Okay, well, I will begin with, uh, I heard my pastor at the time, Pastor J.E. Cruz, yes. make a statement in the pulpit. When we pray, we, we talk to God. Yes. But, but when we read the word, God speaks to us. Yes. Well, I was in my early 20s at the time, and I had never made that connection, nor had I ever heard the word shared in that way. So I was curious. I wanted to know what did God have to say to me. That began my quest of seriously reading and studying the Bible, because I wanted to know what God had to say to me. And it was during this time, brother, that I discovered that the foundation of the Word of God is to teach us love, how to love God, yeah. how to love each other. That's what it's all about Hallelujah. when you boil it all down. And I find this truth, and you said something in your uh, in your exegesis just a minute ago, you said that when we read and study the word and we are obedient to the word, this is, what, this is the key, believing and then being obedient to the word. Yes. 
this opens the door for God to come in in a miraculous way, to come in in a uh, tangible way. Let me put it that way, where God will begin to show himself and God will begin to manifest miracles in your life because you believe and you trust his word. You know, so many people feel that uh, the great sin was the sin of Adam and Eve eating the apple that God told them not to do. Yeah, that was a sin, but the real sin was not believing God over the serpent. So when we believe God, when we believe God's word, whatever it says about us, then that brings life and health to us. That sustains us. And when you asked me about this topic, Brother John, uh, my mind was just completely empty. So I asked God, what is it that I'm supposed to say um, about a topic to speak on? Because usually it's always about music. But when God dropped this in my spirit, I realized that, brother, this is what the world is missing. This is what the church is missing. Yes. We would have such a much greater demonstration of God's presence and power if we would realize that the word is there to sustain us, it's there to feed us, it's there to be our help in the time of trouble, it's to be the answer when we have questions, it's to be bread when we're hungry. The word of God says, man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Yes, so, brother, this word is life. This word is health. Uh, Solomon said it's, it's life and health to your navel, and it's sustenance. So when we look at the word and when we receive the word with this consciousness, with this mind, with this humbleness, and with this hunger, that's when we can really see God move and God work in our lives as never before. And then God is so good, he'll not only bless us, but he will bless us to be a blessing. That part excites me, brother. Because it's, yes, it's about what we do for each other, that, you know, God says, love you one another as I have loved you. So this sustainability, man, let me take it to prayer before I close this thing out. Man, connecting with God in prayer, I learned so many years ago that prayer is like the electrical outlet that's in the wall. You can have the greatest appliance, the greatest machine in the whole world, but if it don't have no juice, if it don't have no power, hallelujah, it's not good for very much just to look at. So when we connect with God through prayer, this, this sustains us. This um, ushers in God's presence and his demonstration into our lives. So I, I encourage every believer and non-believer, open up your Bible, trust the word of God, read the word of God. I began reading in Proverbs and Psalms. That was my beginning because I walked away from a national recording contract after reading a passage in Psalms because I didn't want the man with the money and the power to control my life. And that's what the Word of God taught me about, again, sustainability. And that was 40 years ago, and I'm still here giving a testimony. I'm through. Amen. Brother Calvin, Jeez. how has God demonstrated himself to you by his word? Oh, man, every day, morning by morning, new mercies we see. Great is God's faithfulness. You know, uh, I know that I'm a blessed man, Brother John. I don't, I don't deserve all of God's blessings. So every day God allows me to wake up and to see a brand new day. He's yeah. showing you. He's proving himself. Every time God opens up a door for this opportunity to share with you and with your listeners. This is uh, another demonstration of God's presence and God's love in my life. Um, just from, I shared with you very briefly that God healed my body from COVID-19 back in March. And uh, again, God shows himself. And even while I was in the hospital, brother, God gave me an opportunity to witness to some of the nurses, but especially to my doctor. And uh, I, I'm just, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm overwhelmed, I'm overjoyed at God's presence. I mean, to go into to every little bitty thing, um, how God has rocked my career, how God has blessed my life, how God has sustained me to travel to over 17, 18 countries by now, uh, sharing the gospel touring internationally for the last 24 years straight, 
sharing the good news about Jesus, sharing who Jesus is with different cultures, sharing with them the rich, rich heritage of the gospel music uh, genre and tradition. Uh, Just keeping my family and my friends, keeping my health, providing provision. I know all these things come from God. I don't take any of this stuff lightly. Because, brother, I heard Kenny Gamble say one day, man, this this guy's standing on the street, standing in the doorways, who got more talent than I'll ever have. He was speaking about himself, you know, more talent than, than we'll ever possess. But it's about those doors. It's about those opportunities that God gives to us to walk through. This is where I know that I'm blessed. And then I wrote a song, which I'll close with. Uh, a number of years ago called Chosen to Do a Work for the Master. I was in seminary. Yeah. Called out to be a witness. And, brother, I didn't know I was writing this song about my whole life <laughs> when I wrote it. <laughs> but that's just how God does. That's just how he shows himself. So many times, man, I have prayed, oh, God, I pray you will open up a door. God, I need an opportunity here or there. And then... I'll be doing something. I'll be on a TV show. I'll be on camera. I'll be on a festival or something. And then it will come to my mind, Brother John. I say, God, I asked you for this, and now I'm doing it. It, 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 it blows your mind, trusting yes. and believing the Lord. Amen. Amen and amen mm-hmm. again. Kingdom and Brother Calvin, God through the Bible calls for us to pray, praying always with all prayer. And as we pray in obedience to our Father, we entreat him our higher power for help and favor. God gives us a way to bond with him and strengthens our faith and relationship with him. Prayer allows us worship, acknowledgement, and repentance. Because of this, our spirit man becomes empowered, renewed, and strengthened. Through Mm -hmm. prayer, we are granted all access for grace and favor. Brother Calvin, share with us how you learned about the mysteries of prayer and your experiences from the power of prayer. Well, praise God, brother. But I am so in awe of Jesus the Christ. Jesus was a man, just like you and I. The Christ was his divine nature, his divine consciousness, his divine office and appointment. So when I read what Jesus Christ says or does, it's a big, big, big influence in my life. Yes. So Jesus prayed a prayer. This is my most powerful prayer experience, I believe. Jesus prayed a prayer in the Garden of Gethsemane. Lord, let your will be done. Not my will, but yours. Yes, Lord. Let this cup pass for me if it's your will, but if it's not your will, your will be done. When I first started my career in gospel music, particularly in traveling, in uh, ministering to the nations, This was my prayer to God. Lord, let your will be done. After I made my prayer and my supplication, and after I begged God to send me out, and after I begged God to open doors, my close my prayer and my sincere prayer was, Lord, let your will be done. Because I believe that God's will, no matter what we request of the Lord, is going to be the best and the most prosperous, the most favorable experiences that we can ever have. So in praying, I'm saying that to say this. No matter what you are facing, your challenges, your heart's desires, your aspirations, when you pray, Lord, your will be done, and you mean that, and you're sincere in your heart and you're humble before God, you open up a pathway for God to do miraculous things in your life. Yes. And you believe God through prayer. That's one of the, the biggest tenets of this walk for me and what I share with other people. People say, you know, uh, man, you always have so much joy or, or your faith is so strong. And I just share with them quickly, I believe God. I believe God's word. If God said it, I believe it. If God says he's going to do it, I'm looking for him to do it. I trust him. So that's what I share about prayer. That faith to believe what God says, to believe that God is God, that there's nothing too hard for him. And this opens up all the mysteries of prayer. 
And then I'm, I'm impressed with Job because Job said, you will also decree a thing, and it shall be established unto you, and the light shall shine upon your ways. Oh, my God. And when I read these words, brother, the, the next verse, I can't quote it verbatim at the moment because I'm full, but the word yeah. of God goes on to say that, that your prayer will be a blessing to somebody else, even if they don't deserve it. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. So as we trust God and we pray and believe God's word, not just for ourselves, because, you know, it's, when you're walking in faith, man, it's, it's funny. You can pray and believe things, and you can pray for other people and stuff will happen, but then sometimes you pray for yourself, and then it don't happen. Amen. Well, I was in church one Sunday morning. I was a minister of music at a church on the south side. I was a teenager at that time. And the pastor was calling people up to pray for him and pray for them, and I was on the organ. And I don't know, you know, I'm just, I've been a little crazy all my life, Brother John. So I sat there on the organ and said, well, uh, God is touching all these people as the pastor prays for them on their behalf. I said, but, God, I want you to bless me because I pray to you for myself. And in that moment, in that hour, in that time, from that time on, I believe to trust God for what I pray for. So, brother, I want you to know I start laying hands on myself, and I start getting healed. I start praying and asking God to open doors, and God start opening doors for me. Hallelujah. 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 And then I, I last thing I want to close with, brother, is I was preparing for this present recording that I have out right now. And, man, everything on the planet was going wrong. My automobile of 16 years started breaking down, and it was dead of winter. I had a live recording debt of almost $20,000 to pay. Didn't have no money. Man, at one of the worst rehearsals in the world, everything went wrong. I came to my house. I got on my living room floor on my knees with my face to the carpet, and I cried out to the Lord. All I could hear God saying to me was, I got you. Don't worry. It's going to be all right. Well, long story short, brother, God blessed me. Some people that I had met Months ago, in Europe, at a workshop, at a yeah, at a workshop, contacted me, and they blessed my ministry. I didn't ask for anything. They blessed my ministry. Oh, really? Yes, Lord. And 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 they said, just look out for it. But I thought it was going to be a few hundred dollars or whatever, you know. Thanking and praising God, man, it was a five thousand dollar donation. And then turn around in less than two weeks, it was another $5,000 donation. Hallelujah. Thank and you. this enabled me to pay off my debt with the album. Then God sent me some more help, brother. And that car that was 16 years old turned into a brand new 2017 Mercedes Benz E Class. Because I stood in my bedroom and I asked God, I said, God, I've been sowing into people's lives all my life. Yes, Lord. Lord, bless me. I want you to know I got that 2017 E-Class. I never paid a dime on the note, the insurance, the gasoline, the maintenance, nothing. Because the Lord God opened men's hearts to bless Calvin. Okay, I'll stop there. Amen. Amen and amen again. Kingdom, our last part of this topic of interview is sustainability, which means meeting our own needs without compromising the ability of the future generations to meet their own needs. Uh For this to become into being, we have to teach our up-and-coming generations from babes how to learn, how to build their prayer lives and built it up by God's word. So, yeah. Brother Calvin, share your words of wisdom for the next generation to come because we want to give them the right support and nourishment to carry them so they are able to withstand, especially in the times of trouble. Well, the first thing I'm go- I want to say while I have a chance is if you've listened to anything that you and I have 
shared and spoken since the podcast began. They already got the tools to keep them until they see Jesus. Yeah. I'm, I, I'm, I'm one of those people I like to cut to the chase. Now I'll go into the details. <laughs> yeah. Um, I believe that I've, one of the reasons God has blessed me to travel to the nations and to tour and to sing and to share my faith with the nations is because, brother, whenever I sing a song, I share what that song is about. I share who that song is about and what that relationship is. And I share with the nations about relationship, and that's what I want to share with every, every listener, every young person. I don't care what church you belong to. You should care. I don't care, but you should care. Whatever church you belong to, whatever denomination it is, you must have a relationship with Almighty God through Jesus Christ. Yes. And when you do that, when you realize that, when you embrace that and understand that, that opens up the door for every good thing in your life, in your future, in the lives of everyone you touch. So sharing that much is just uh, all they really need to get by, <laughs> Ash and the Simpsons say. <laughs> you know, that's really all you really need in this life. Uh, the Bible, Basic Instructions Before Leaving Earth. That's a popular acronym for the Bible, the I-B-L-E. But let me tell you, the Bible is a book of life. It's a book of, of instruction, a book of inspiration, encouragement, and empowerment. Because when you read the word and you know the word for yourself, I heard a, a televangelist say many years ago, and I've always embraced it because I know it's true, the devil is not intimidated by who you are. But he is intimidated by what you know about who you are. And unless you read the word and study the word, you will not know who you are in God. Yeah. You will not know what God has already provided for you. Ephesians says we've been chosen in him before the foundation of the world. We've been blessed with all spiritual blessings in the heavenlies in Christ Jesus. We're already seated with Christ. Jesus is our portion. Hallelujah. So when you know what the wealth of inheritance and the decree God has spoken over your life and you believe it and you walk in it, you can be 90 years old and have a baby boy. <laughs> yeah. Ask Abraham. <laughs> you know, so I praise God for his hand being upon my life because quite honestly and sincerely, Brother John, it ain't about me. It ain't nothing about me. It's sharing this journey, sharing this walk opening up these doors to the youth and sharing with your children, letting them know who you are and, and, and that your faith has a firm foundation of evidence, evidence, evidence. This walk with God is, an, is, is a walk of evidence. And uh, just from not just the, the material things, but the spiritual things and the, and the, Blessings that God gives. Again, man, uh, in, in March, I just came back from Europe. I had seven engagements. And I was, I got home, uh, when I had seven engagements, I only did two. Then uh, the government said all the Americans returned to the United States. So I did on that Friday. By that Sunday, I started getting sick. And, man, I was so sick in this house for over a week my fever went up and down. It got as high as 104. And the sad part about it was every time you would call the doctor at the hospital, they would say, stay home, don't come. And so that meant that you had to go through it, you know. Mm. So I had a talk with the Lord about it. I said, Lord, you know, if it's your will that I don't overcome this illness, your will be done. If you got more work for me to do, heal me and show me my work. So I praise God. I went to the hospital, and I was able to witness to my doctor and to my nurses and just let them know the power of God and the power of prayer as I lay weak on my sick bed. Yeah. And I was witnessing to them because, Brother John, they were saying, well, you made such a remarkable turnaround. We want to send you home. <laughs> 
<laughs> and I was saying to myself, oh, God, I'm so weak. I still feel so badly. But then the Lord spoke to me and says, somebody who is really sick needs this hospital bed. Yeah. So I got up and I got out of there. But, man, it's those kinds of blessings. It's that kind of walk. God will walk with you and he will talk with you and he will let you know that you are his own. He will let you know how real he is, no matter what others may say or do. And it will give you a faith that is unmovable, undeniable, unshakable, and that is miracle working. I sat across the aisle from Patty LaBelle two years before, no, it was more than two years, probably five years before I slept at her house because of that song called Chosen. She and her husband heard the album. They loved the music. They invited me to come there and work with them. And the rest is history. I didn't know Patty LaBelle knew me from Joe Blow. But God will put you in places and open doors for you when you truly trust him. Yeah. And amen. Amen. Brother Calvin, please introduce yourself to the kingdom. Well, brother, I'm just somebody who's trying to tell anybody, everybody about somebody who can save anybody. Yeah. <laughs> I, I am a, a native of Chicago, Illinois, uh, baptized into the apostolic faith. Bishop Horace Earl Smith is my pastor, and uh, I'm a member of Apostolic Faith Church. You can get my music on every digital outlet. Uh, you name it, it's there. Just put in my name. My latest project is called Gospel Church Generations. And uh, I named it that because, man, when we, would, when we have services over in Europe, uh, we have what's called Gospel Church. You know, the regular services are the services of the liturgy and the hymnal singing and the standing and the sitting and the reciting. But... Uh, when they invite me over for church, we mix it up a little bit, and we have what's called gospel church. And, brother, if the concert starts at 8, and at 8, at 7.45, it's only two people in the audience. By 8 p.m., there are people standing around the walls and sitting on the floor. And we rock the house for Jesus. <laughs> yeah. So let me go back. You can reach me at Calvin Bridges US on Instagram and Twitter. Calvin Bridges Music on Facebook. Just put my name in. Um, you can find me. I want to ask everyone to please support uh, my latest single, which is titled Breathe. Uh, it's a song that has grown out of so much seeking God and, and a prayer cry. I, w I want to say desperation, and I'm trying not to say desperation, but it is a desperate cry for God to breathe on our world to breathe on our planet, to breathe on us just as he breathed on the dry bones and they came to life. That's what we need for God to breathe on us. Yeah. My video is upwards of 100,000 views now, so I'm asking everyone who will hear, go to YouTube, watch that video, share it, subscribe, leave me a comment, uh, give me a like, and then share that video. Uh, my prayer is that everyone on the planet will see this video and, and that God will breathe on us. Man, even, i got so many stories, John, I can't even tell you in this few minutes about how God has opened doors. That's a ten or $20,000 video that didn't cost me anywhere thing near that because God opened men's hearts. And this song, this story ministers to people. So they say, how can I help? How can I help share this message? And I praise God. I praise God for you. So, man, for you sharing your time and your airways with me, and, and, and everybody, that's Calvin Bridges Music on Facebook, Calvin Bridges U.S. on all of the others. My website is calvinbridges.org, one word, www.calvinbridges.org. Stop by, leave me a message, subscribe. I want to connect with you. Um, I have a great prayer ministry as well as song ministry and word ministry when God opens that door. So I, I thank and praise God for using me to be a kingdom witness. For I am chosen to do a work for the master, called out to be a witness. Amen. And Kingdom, before we get ready to hear Breathe, Brother Calvin, please tell us a little bit about the song we just heard, I'm Not Tired Yet. Man, uh, I'm not tired yet running for Jesus. I wrote 
when I was ministering music at uh, Faith Tabernacle Baptist Church, late 80s, early 90s. And uh, I never recorded it. A couple of other people have recorded variations of the song. And this song is just a test of mo ho I, I, I'm, I've been running for Jesus and I'm not tired yet is uh, what the song is all about. And it's a testament to that whole thing that we've been talking about, to our sustainability through the word and through prayer, believing God's word, seeking him in prayer, trusting him for the decisions that we make, seeking the Holy Spirit, learning how to love and honor one another and treasure each other's gifts, sharing those gifts openly. And, uh, you know, the enemy will try to come in and say, well, so-and-so and so-and-so is doing this and that, and uh, that, that should be you, and you should be doing this, that, and the other. But I've learned to, to squash those thoughts and quell those thoughts and humble myself before the Lord. And, and you know what? The word of God is true. If you humble yourself before the Lord, he will exalt you in due time. If you delight yourself in him, he will give you the desires of your heart. So, brother, I'm asking everyone to reach out to me, um, share your testimony, share your hearts with me. I have a global ministry, and I'm thanking God for so many people all over the world who are praying for me and with me, and I'm praying for you. God bless you. Amen. And Kingdom, the music of Brother Calvin is in rotation currently on Let's Talk to the Lord Radio dot yep. International. Kingdom, Let's Talk to the Lord can be heard on iHeartRadio, Spotify, Alexa, YouTube. You can download episodes from speaker.com. You can hear us every Monday on Elation Radio and at PositivePower21.org. Click on Menu. Click on Menu media room and let's talk to the lord is there every episode and every saturday on sensational sounds radio at 11 a.m central time please write to us at let's talk to the lord at yahoo.com please visit our website let's talk to the lord radio Dot international. Please follow us on Twitter at Ross Apostle. Please download our app on your Google App Store on your cell phone under the name Let's Talk to the Lord Radio. On Let's Talk to the Lord Radio International, we have 24-7 music, talk radio, interviews, news, and so much more. And Kingdom, you can now ask Alexa to begin Let's Talk Radio International. My latest Release, Lord, Give Me Another Chance, is available in all digital stores featuring Sean Skills and Tamara Lloyd, and remember, now thy creator is still available under the name Minister John Ross in all digital stores. So until next time, may God bless you, and may God keep you living your lives at the foot of the cross under a open heaven. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen, brother. God bless you. I think you're gone.